Multicolored high bounce balls are a really good way to introduce some motor skills training into our exercise program. They're really good for hand-eye coordination and for visuospatial capacity overall. We can add a cognitive challenge into our exercise by using different coloured balls for different tasks. So for example, I might have a red ball and a green ball. The green ball, I'm only allowed to play with my left hand and the red ball, I'm only allowed to play with my right hand. So then I can play a passing game with a trainer or a friend where when I throw the red ball, they catch it with their right hand and when I throw the green ball, they catch it with their left. I can add a memory component into this by having more than two balls. So say for example, I've got a red ball and a blue one for my right hand and I've got a green ball and a yellow ball for my left hand and I've got to remember which colours go with which hand. I might also be extra evil and throw two balls at the same time and the other person has to remember which ball to catch with which hand. Let's look at a couple of ways to use our bouncy balls to add some physical and cognitive challenge to our static balance work. We're going to start in whichever static balance position is best for us and that might be a close narrow stance or it could be a tandem stance where you've got one foot in front of the other or you might be able to balance on a single leg. Once we can achieve this balance position, we're going to use the bouncy ball to add a little bit of challenge for our balance by bouncing the ball along the floor around where we are standing. We can add some vestibular challenge and some visual challenge to our balance work by taking our ball, throwing it up in the air and following it up with our eyes as we stand on one leg. And this will challenge our vestibular system a little bit more. In this exercise, I'm going to use a bouncy ball to introduce some variety, a little bit of complexity, and a little bit of extra physical and cognitive challenge to a dynamic balance or stepping exercise. Now, before we start using the ball, I want to make sure that we can comfortably step and return back to base without any problems with our balance. We can make the step smaller or larger, depending on our capacity. And then when we're comfortable with this, we can start to introduce a little bit of a bounce. Going to bounce the ball with the opposite hand to the foot. And we're going to try and see if we can get a nice rhythm. Once we're comfortable with this, we can start to alternate our feet. And we're going to catch the ball with the opposite hand to the hand that we dropped it with. In this exercise, I'm going to add a little bit of a cognitive challenge to my stepping exercise by alternating between an ipsilateral and a contralateral pattern. So ipsilateral meaning same side. When I step with my left foot, I'm going to bounce the ball with my left hand and a contralateral pattern is the opposite way. So when I step with my left foot, I bounce the ball with my right hand. I'm going to start by just using one pattern or another. Ipsilateral. Or contralateral. When I've got the hang of that, I'm going to start alternating between the two. Ipsy, contra, ipsy, contra, ipsy, contra, ipsy, contra. Now let's see if we can put all four of them together. Ipsy, contra, ipsy. Contra, ipsy, contra, ipsy, contra. Of course, I can make this a whole lot more difficult by getting a partner to pass the ball to me and I have to do either an ipsy or contralateral pattern depending on the colour of the ball 
or they can call out Ipsy or Contra to me as they throw the ball to me. If I don't have a surface that I can bounce the ball on the floor, I can, of course, also use a wall. Let's play a game of hopscotch. I'm going to add some cognitive load to my hopscotch game by using different colored cones for different foot positions. So if it's a blue cone, I'm going to use both my feet. If it is a red cone, I'm going to use my right foot. And no prize for guessing if it is a yellow cone, I'm going to be using my left foot. Now I can hop, jump or step through this hopscotch depending on my level of capacity and balance. I can take the cones further away to make it harder. I can bring them closer together to make it easier. And I can go faster or slower depending on my capacity. Let's have a go. In this exercise, I'm going to use four different cues and I'm going to assign each cue to a different movement pattern. I'm going to use four different colors with my lights for my blaze pods here. But if you don't have access to lights, you can also use four different color markers or if you have a friend or a trainer that you're working with, you can get them to give you a verbal cue, either calling out a color or calling out a number from one to four. To make things a little bit more simple to start with, I'm going to assign only two patterns of movement. So I've got four colors here. I've got a blue and a green light, and I'm going to assign the blue and green light to my left leg. And then I've also got a red light and an orange light, which I'm going to assign to my right leg. So if it's a red or an orange light, I'm going to step with my right leg. And if it's a blue or a green light, I'm going to step with my left leg and I'm going to touch the light with the same side hand. So if I step with my left leg, I'm going to use my left hand and vice versa, like so. Blue light, left leg, left hand. Orange light, right leg, right hand. Now to make things really spicy in the brain department, we are going to go from two patterns to four patterns. So I'm going to keep the assigned light the same. So I'm going to keep the red light and the orange light on my right leg, and I'm gonna keep the blue light and the green light on my left leg. What is going to change is the hand that I use. So if I get a red light, red, right, right. Red light, right leg, right hand, red, right, ipsilateral. If I get an orange light, orange, right, and left hand, so contralateral pattern. So a red light is a right-sided ipsilateral pattern, an orange light is a right-sided contralateral pattern. And then the same on the left. If I get a blue light, I'm going to go blue to my left leg and my left hand, ipsilateral. If I get a green light, it's going to be my left leg and my right hand. So blue, left, ipsilateral. Green, left, contralateral. One more time. Red right, ipsilateral, orange, right, contralateral, left, blue, ipsilateral, left, green, contralateral. Let's give it a go. What could possibly go wrong? Blue, left, ipsilateral, orange, right, contralateral. Again, Orange, right, contralateral, all the orange lights, boom. Red, right, ipsilateral, blue, left, ipsilateral, and so on and so forth. This little game is a personal favorite of mine and it is actually a lot harder to do than you might think when you first look at it. 
There's quite a lot going on here in terms of cognitive demand, and there's also a bit of a fine motor skills element to it. When you first start doing this, I uh, recommend that you just do the exercise on its own. But if you're a bit of a boffin, you can also incorporate this exercise into a dual tasking situation where you might be balancing on a balance pad or on a single leg. So in the setup here, I've got three different coloured cones, a blue, a yellow and a red cone. And I also have got three balls of the same colour, yellow, red and blue. And you will notice that the ball and the cone colour do not correspond and that is deliberate. Because I don't have any friends, I'm going to use this blaze pod or this light to give me the cue for what I want to do. So this light is going to give me a blue light, a red light or a yellow light and I'm going to play the game according to that light. If I have a friend, which is always nice, I can get my friend or my trainer to call out the colour that they want me to play. The colour of the light corresponds to the colour of the cone, not the colour of the ball. And this is where it actually gets really tricky because you see the colour of the ball first, it's on top of the cone. You need to ignore the colour of the ball and only pay attention to the colour of the cone. And you are going to swap the ball that is on the correct colour cone. So let's have a go. I've got a yellow light here, so I need to swap the ball on the yellow cone. I'm going to tap the light to change the light. Another yellow one, red, red, red. 